Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Oh. So if anybody's if anybody's out there watching this, how how can they get you to help them? All right. So what I do is I, I train a lot of people in marketing. So I'm I'm actually a better marketer than I am a, a mentalist because for every hour I spent practicing uh, mind reading, I spent three hours marketing. So if they go to thebenjibruce.com, uh, they can actually just sign up for marketing tips and all that. I train people on how to get like just how to charge a lot for what they do, how to basically monetize expertise. It doesn't matter if you're a speaker, coach, consultant. I basically train people on marketing because uh, that's what I'm really, really good at rather than just the, the mind reading. So yeah, if you guys- so you just, train people to market. Yeah, I, I train people how to basically- What about what you. about elevate their brand or establish a brand? Yeah, the, the brand part is actually the easy part. So it's the we first had, thing, We had someone yesterday, one of our new clients, Scott Columna asked, how do I establish or, or build up the brand before he launches his VT? What would you say to him? Right, so, well, I would want to ask him more about the, the brand in general, but what I do is I think in terms of association. So whatever you, you want to be known for, you associate yourself with that thing. It's just like how I said where I would get the testimonials. I want it to be a corporate entertainer. So I said, okay, what does corporate look like? Corporate looks like these guys in suits, decked out. So I said, okay, let me associate myself with these guys. I take the, the pictures and all that. So. I would always associate, and, and that's what I, I would tell him, where whatever you want to be known for, you associate with that, and you just repeat it over and over and over, just nonstop, and from there, that's how you build a natural brand. You always think, you think, how do I make myself look like a freaking celebrity? Like, how do I make myself look like a rock star? That, that's what I always think about, is uh, it's not just, just one, one little thing that you're doing, it's what does a celebrity do, what, what do they look like, and then that's what I'm going to do. Just like with the, the media stuff, I look at little things like that. I say, okay, for media inquiries, contact this. And, and you associate yourself with, with that. Whatever high value is, whatever celebrity is, you associate yourself with that. That's how you build the brand. Then the sales product, everything else is easy. Well, what, what, do you, what do you do different from all the other corporate entertainers trying to get the work? Uh, what I do different in terms of how do I get the work? Yeah, like how do you create distinction between you and all the other entertainers. So, all right. So, so there is a, a video with Floyd Mayweather, and someone asked Floyd Mayweather. They said, um, they said something like, "Well, do you prepare? Do you like watch these videos?" There's a, there's uh, a photo of, of Floyd people. Mayweather talking on his cell phone, but it's like a stack of hundreds. <laughs> yeah. yeah and this so, right here is like one of those baby flip phones compared to Floyd's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so Floyd, he was like, he's like, I don't prepare. Uh, for them, he's all, they gotta beat me. I don't need to beat them, they gotta beat me. So he's like, I don't watch their footage. And I think the same with all the other entertainers where I don't even think about them because they gotta beat me. And, and so uh, I, don't, I don't think in terms of distinguishing myself from them or I, don't, I actually don't hang around other entertainers. I hang around a lot of business people. And so, yeah, I, just, I, don't, I don't need to, to sit there and say, here's why I'm different. I basically wanted to build a, a top notch image where people come to me saying, hey, we want to bring you in, not just a mentalist. So you're too busy focused on building your business than worrying about what other people are doing and that in and of itself distinguishes you? Yeah, yeah. Smart move, man. I, I think I saw a meme or something where the, the swimmers, you got the, uh, what's his name? Mm -hmm. The other swimmers uh, looking at him. Remember yeah, that Michael one? Phelps. And yeah, Phelps there. is like just going for the gold. The other one's yeah. looking at him and it yeah. says, it says, uh, winners look at their goals and losers look at the winners. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. No, uh, dude, this is some serious stuff because listen, I, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurial types out there that follow me. They're wanting to, you know, make a success out of their life. They're looking to support their families better. And a lot of times when I talk to them, I got to hear their problems. Like, you know, uh, they were on government cheese. I mean, you were on government cheese. Boo hoo. Did you get constipated? What, what, how's that blocking you? When I hear your story, it's mind blowing because like, you, you're, you're, was it your sister that was 11 years old that got pregnant? Yeah, 11 years old got pregnant. I mean, who gets pregnant at 11 years old? Obviously, if a 11 year old gets pregnant, it's probably because an adult or someone way too old was doing her. That's right. Yeah, he was. Uh, she was 11. She. He was probably 20. 
See, I mean, like, that that's unbelievable. I got Amber over there getting ready to tear up. At the end of the day, I mean, this is some serious shit. Like, you know, the other day when someone asked me, you know, how do I deal with getting knocked down? It's like, I've never been knocked down. Dude, this is getting knocked down, but you came back. You ended up, you know, making the right choices and doing the right thing. And my question for all the people watching is, if this guy can go through watching his mom get whacked, having his dad basically abuse all of the children, have brothers and sisters get molested. What, were they getting molested? Oh, right. I remember walking in my sister's, in my sister's room, my, sister, my older sister yelling me, get your ass out of here, because they were protecting me. But what were they doing? Oh, my, my dad was molested, having sex with them, raping them. And, and, and I'm talking about things I would never want my 28-year-old daughter to see on a TV. Now, see, again, guys, your government cheese problem is probably not that much of a problem. But even if it is a problem, tell them how you dealt with these challenges with, that would normally eliminate anybody's chance of success and still succeeded. How did you still succeed? How did you push through those? How did you get past those? Well, I had mentors. I had a teacher who changed my life. I had a guy named Dave Thomas who helped me, who started a hamburger chain called Wendy's after his daughter, Melinda Lou. I always wanted to be successful. I always looked at other people. I saw people holding doors for people. I still hold, after 30 years, I hold my wife's door open every day. Every day I open the door, I close the door for her, I make our bed every single day. Because if that's the one thing I could do to make her happy, but I always learn from other people. I would watch the Brady Bunch and say, I want that life. So even though I didn't have parents to teach me, I emulated other people by watching them. And I just had a, I wanted to succeed. I wanted, I didn't know what success was, but I wanted things that I saw on TV or the outside world. And then all I did was I found someone like Brad, I found someone like Dave Thomas, and I said, how can I do this? Because success is easy, it really is. The process is painful, it's hard, but success is easy. Once you choose it, once you take that action, you put one foot in, I'm not talking about manifesting, because manifesting is a bunch of crap. It is. I can manifest all day long and I want to go lose 39 pounds. But if I don't get on the treadmill, if I'm not lifting the weights, it's not doing nothing. So you drop the word manifest and just go do things. Go do shit, as he would say. Take action. What, That's it. Take I, action. I need to clean up my, my image if everything I would say is shit and fuck and everything else. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. That's the thing is if you, it, it doesn't matter. If you're using that debit card as a credit card or debit card, you're still giving the hackers access to your bank account. It's that simple. They have access to your bank account now for the next three months because whether or not you cause the problem, it could be just some Russian hacker that logs into Home Depot and steals all their stuff. You know, I just got my debit card replaced. I never use it except for when I go to the bank. And I got a letter saying, we think there might be some fraud, and so we replaced your card. And they do it all the time. And where that comes into a problem with your paycheck to paycheck, like 76%. Especially, especially when you're buying online. Yeah, no, no debit cards. But if you're paycheck to paycheck, like 76% of Americans, you can't go more than two weeks with no money. And it can take you up to three months to get that money back from the bank. How are you gonna pay your rent? How are you gonna go get food for your kids? You know, then your electricity gets shut off. Or maybe you're paying your car insurance. Share this out, folks. Your car insurance with a debit card. Your debit card got hacked, so it got shut down. You forgot to call your insurance company. You're driving home from work. You get in a car accident. Now you have no insurance because you got canceled. So debit cards are a bad idea. You know, and this happens to people every day. All every day. day. Don't, I talk don't, to don't, them every don't, day. Don't, yeah, don't think, don't think this can't happen to you. This can happen to you big time. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because a lot of entertainers, people don't know this, but entertainers, they they devalue themselves. They think five hundred dollars is a lot for a show. And and at, when I was doing it, I thought five hundred dollars was a lot too. Until I start hanging around with guys like you, and I'm like, all right, I gotta step up my game. And well, so, that's only because I'm hanging around other people. Yeah. And, See, listen, man. No matter what or where you are in life, there's always someone that you think, wow, that guy's somebody. That mm -hmm. guy's the punk 
in probably his circles. Like I'm, I, I'm the brokest dude I know in the circles I run with. But you want to, you want to jump circles, man. You want to be the brokest guy in your circle, mm-hmm. and then eventually, when you become the richest guy in that circle, jump circles. Just like real estate. Would you rather have the most expensive house in the neighborhood, to where you're dragging up the value of all the other houses? Or would you rather have the cheapest house in the neighborhood where all the other houses are dragging you up? Works the same way with your friends. Hang around bigger, smarter people than you, richer, more successful, more experienced, and you get brought up to their level. Then pretty soon, I mean, if you're constantly hustling, you eventually, you know, surpass some of them. And then guess what? Jump to another level. Sounds like that's what you're saying. That's exactly what I did to where it was uh, that whole thing of, got to hang around the, the right people and I stopped hanging around entertainers. I started hanging around all the business people and everything changed. I, I went from doing the couple hundred to 10, 15, 20, 25,000 dollars. And uh, it was all because of just who I, who I hung around. Because the, the state of mind is just so different. It's like- Who you hanging around folks? Yep. Who you hanging around? Are you hanging around somebody that always makes you pay for food when you go out or pays for your food? Who are you hanging around? Mm-hmm. You should audit your friends. Yep. I always say to people, man, this weekend someone says, what you doing? I say, I'm going I'm to make a list of everybody I hang out with and see which ones aren't going to make it. <laughs> I got to get new friends. You got to get new friends, new real estate. You want to always continually change your environment. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you can't have childhood buddies. You can't have good friends that you see. I'm talking about get new stuff coming into your life. New people, new friends, new. I always say the more hands you shake, the more money you make. You got to meet people. Sounds like you met a lot of people in your life. Yeah, I I met a a gang load of people because just doing the shows, I get to meet top-notch people. Once you start doing this stuff, people start running up and telling you, show me another one, show me another one. Pretty soon you're like Mr. Cool at the whole place. Yeah, yeah. And it was, honestly, it was was kind of... Uh, at a certain point, I got kind of mad because I was like, I'm a better marketer than I am an entertainer. But everyone always sees me as an entertainer. And, and so I, I, for a second, I got kind of mad. But then I realized it was actually a huge benefit because... You're a mental tainer. Yeah, a mental tainer. That's good. That's Marketing it. But it, it was It was actually, because of what I do, it was easy for me to connect with guys like you, Grant Cardone, all types of top-notch people. It was just easy to connect just because I could show you guys. I could show stuff like this. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up.